What you're watching is far better than any eyewitness. What you're seeing is an exact record of a strange moment in time. This is Giselle Esteban at Michelle Lay's nursing school, the day before Michelle vanished. Why she was here was a mystery. But what she did? That Inspector Ritchie pieced together from Giselle's electronic trail, which picked her up in the morning at the nursing school, posing as a prospective student. Well, there she stole an instructor's key card, then appeared to test whether it would work by entering this break room. And then at 5.30 in the evening, when the, the campus is closed, she gains access through the back door using that electronic Same key card. Same swipe card. Yes. Throughout the campus, there are, in the classrooms and in the hallways, there's, there's cameras. And it shows Giselle walking around with a lab coat on, her glasses up, and she's going around turning on computers. Weird. Yeah. Giselle can also be seen with a class roster stolen from an instructor's office. And you can see the class roster because it has all the students' photographs on there. So it's not just, just typed, it's yeah. photographs. So you can see that it's a class roster. And, and it looks like she's walking around as if she's pretending to be an instructor or something like that. She's in Samuel Merritt for an hour and a half or so, and then, and then she leaves. All of this the night before Michelle Lay disappeared. What was Giselle doing? And then Richie learned from questioning eyewitnesses that on the morning after Michelle disappeared, Giselle Esteban went with her daughter in tow to an Apple store. And sure enough, there she was on the store security camera. That's her there at the top left of your screen, having one of the employees unlock an iPhone. She told the Apple employee that her daughter had put a code into the phone and locked it. Once he unlocked it, the phone started binging and ringing. And just at that very moment, as cell phone records showed, Michelle Lay's iPhone began pinging on a cell phone tower not far from the Apple store. Now it was a matter of following the signal, which led to this Chuck E. Cheese restaurant a few miles away, where the phone turned up again. Giselle was seen on a video showing a white iPhone. Remember, this is the day after Michelle's disappearance when her friends and family were frantically calling and texting her. And look at this surveillance footage. Looks like Giselle is sending out text messages. And at that moment, as records show, Michelle's iPhone was pinging off a nearby cell tower. To Richie, it seemed quite clear. Giselle Esteban was the one using Michelle's phone to send those creepy text messages to worried friends and family, and to him. And Giselle did all this while on a shopping trip with her daughter. And she's on that phone, roughly the same time that she's getting text messages from the classmates and family members and things like that. And then I sent her a second text message at roughly at 3.15 in the afternoon saying, this is not a joke, this is the police department, you need to contact me right now. That was the last contact. That's when her phone went off. The evidence was mounting. So Richie stepped up his surveillance of Giselle. We placed a, uh, a tracker on her car. Why? To see if she would take us to a location that Michelle would possibly be. But that didn't happen. Not to say, though, her behavior wasn't suspicious. Remember the vigil the Lay family held a week after Michelle's disappearance, the one attended by Giselle's ex-boyfriend, Scott? It turned out Giselle was there, too. Sort of. The tracking device showed Giselle circling the block as Michelle's family pleaded for help. And later, it showed her driving past Scott's house. Why? Richie was all but sure now Giselle had something to do with Michelle's disappearance. The question now was, did she have some help? It was something that we had to, we had to look at. If so, who? Yeah, dive into her life, who's her friends, and who can we talk to? that knows Giselle. Richie consulted an Alameda County assistant DA, a guy named Butch, Butch Ford. Some of my colleagues, their response was, well, who helped her do it? Because she's a woman, she's pregnant. In order to do this, she had to have help. Prosecutors had a hard time believing Esteban was physically capable of killing Michelle Lay all by herself. We uh, encouraged them to make sure they eliminated any possible suspects, such as the father of Giselle's uh, child. That would be Scott, the ex-boyfriend Butch is referring to. 
And so everybody's antenna went up in late July, 63 days after Michelle's disappearance, as the Lay family searched the hills for her. Inspector Ritchie got a very strange phone call from Scott, who sounded out of breath. Saying that he believed that he had found Michelle's phone. I asked him, where did you find Michelle's phone? In the backseat of his car. Coming up, at first, police doubt Scott's story. Had we missed something? Is he the other part of this? Or was he Giselle's next victim? You deserve to die for your lies, as does she. This is your last and final. When Vanished continues. <laughs>